President Biden is in Israel today, pledging U.S. support for the Jewish state. Many Israelis are concerned that behind the scenes, the president is trying to thwart Israel's plan to destroy Hamas. Earlier this morning, the president said he's seen evidence that Israel did not bomb a hospital in Gaza. Yet Hamas continues to point the finger at Israel, fueling outrage throughout the Arab world. Chris Mitchell reports. Upon his arrival, President Biden reiterated his commitment to Israel. Israel, as they respond to these attacks, seems to me that uh, have to continue to ensure that you have what you need to defend yourselves. And uh, we're going to make sure that occurs. But above all, Mr. President, the world sees that support and the moral clarity that you have demonstrated from the moment Israel was attacked. You've rightly drawn a clear line between the forces of civilization and the forces of barbarism. You describe what Hamas did as sheer evil. It is exactly that. Yet Josh Reinstein, president of the Israel Allies Foundation, told CBN News many Israelis are concerned about Biden's visit. I think people are worried it's a double-edged sword. You know, we're seeing that the sanctions on Iran are being lifted as we speak on ballistic missiles. We're seeing that the American administration is not pointing the finger at, pink finger at the Iran, even though we know that Hamas and Hezbollah is their proxy armies and they fund them, they equip them, they train them. Um, so people are worried to see what's, what's going to happen. Carolyn Glick from the Jewish News Syndicate reported U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken issued a warning to Israel's war cabinet. Tony Blinken was threatening uh, withholding American war material from Israel that we need, um, specifically uh, things like bunker buster bombs and other things, including um, including artillery shells. Um, and uh, unless Israel provides humanitarian aid. Glick points out all humanitarian aid in Gaza goes into the hands of Hamas. The UN group UNRWA tweeted recently that Hamas stole food and fuel from their compound. CBN News reached out to the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem for a response to Glick's reporting, but has yet to receive a reply. A major part of the president's trip was canceled after Hamas accused Israel of striking a hospital in Gaza. Jordan's foreign minister canceled the meeting between President Biden, Jordan's King Abdullah, Egyptian President al-Sisi, and Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. Demonstrators in Istanbul, Jordan, Hebron, and others protested what they called a massacre by the IDF. The IDF presenting evidence, it says, shows a failed rocket launch by the Islamic Jihad. Intelligence from few sources that we have in our hands indicates that the Islamic Jihad is responsible for the failed rocket launch which hit the hospital in Gaza. I repeat, this is the responsibility of Islamic Jihad that killed innocents in the hospital in Gaza. The IDF showed video of the failed launch and a recording between Hamas and Islamic Jihad admitting the failed launch. This video shows the damage done to the parking lot next to the hospital, which military experts say resembles a rocket strike, not a bomb, which leaves a crater. The IDF also says Hamas is inflating the number of dead. And President Biden also reiterated Israel did not bomb the hospital. Israel's defenders say the hospital is now part of a propaganda campaign waged by Hamas in the international media. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, Ambassador David Friedman is joining us now. He's the former U.S. ambassador to Israel. So uh, thank you so much for being with us again. Uh, and give us your insight on, on where we stand right now. What, what are you expecting President Biden to do in Israel today? Well, thanks, Gordon, for having me. And I think that um, I think the president came uh, largely for the reasons he said he wanted to show uh, America's unqualified support for Israel, and I think he wanted to uh, show the world that America stands with Israel, and I think he was helpful in uh, reiterating the, the obvious that Israel did not destroy a hospital in, in Gaza. Um, so I, I think those were his purposes. But, you know, the question that everybody's concerned about, and I thought uh, the reporting that I just heard was, was excellent in this regard, you know, what's going to happen when the when Israel begins to really 
take the steps necessary to root out Hamas. Now, the president has said that he wants Israel to, to, to root out Hamas. Hamas is worthy of annihilation. But, you know, it's not like everybody in the Gaza Strip is, is, is raising their hand and saying, you know, I'm Hamas, come and kill me. It's a complicated effort. And in any war, there are, you know, civilian casualties. And, you know, when the president speaks, he makes these cryptic references to, uh, you know, to, to civilian casualties. And no one really knows what he means, because in any war, in, the, in, in, in a war that is prosecuted with the most moral, the, the most sensitive, the most surgically, you know, uh, surgical armies, there still are civilian casualties. And in, in Gaza, especially, I mean, you know, I think we use the term civilian, you know, charitably. I mean, 80 percent of the Gazan population despises Israel. They they cheered when all these uh, atrocities were were, 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 you know, were shown on social media. They are, um, they, they are the most anti-Semitic people on earth. And they provide, you know, aid and comfort and safe passage and a place to hide for all the terrorists. So, you know, some of them, as this process goes forward, are going to lose their lives. Now, someone takes a picture, puts it on the Internet, puts it on the 24-7 news cycle. It gets into the social media of, you know, Rashida Tlaib or AOC or Ilhan Omar, one of the squad who, you know, have already been, you know, uh, falsely accusing Israel of all kinds of war crimes that they haven't committed. And then you really see where the rubber hits the road. What will the president do then? As the pressure mounts from, you know, the left within his base, what does he do? Because Israel has to win this war. They, they have no choice. If Israel cannot annihilate and eradicate Hamas, the, the ultimate the ultimate conclusion from that is that Hamas will come back bigger and stronger. They will declare victory. And ultimately, the, the, the message is that Israel cannot defend its citizens from further atrocities. And we can't have that. So, um, you know, the answer to your question is, uh, you know, we'll give them a good grade coming today. I mean, a very good grade. It was, it was a very strong show of support to, to fly halfway in the, around the world to be in Israel today. But the question is, is he building capital with the Israelis to then spend in a way which uh, forces Israel prematurely to end this battle? And, and we don't know right now. Well, you and dozens of other uh, religious leaders, both Jewish and Christian, signed a public letter calling on President Biden to take stronger action on behalf of Israel. So what more are you looking for? I think, well, I, th I think primarily um, it, it is to make it clear to Israel that it will have the, the space, the time and the resources to complete this, this, um, this uh, battle, this war against Hamas. Um, th that's still an open issue, as I was alluding to earlier. Um, look, this war could take a month. It could take two, three months. Uh, it's complicated. It's, it's urban warfare. This area is heavily booby-trapped. Many of the um, uh, terrorists embed, you know, with civilians. It's, it's just very complicated. And, you know, Israel is going to do what it has to do to protect its citizens. It has no choice. Um, but if it ends this war too early, because of pressure from America, I think we're handing uh, Hamas, all the forces of evil, you know, all the terrorists around the world, an, an enormous victory. And I think it will come back to haunt us um, in America as well as in Israel. Uh, let's talk about the diplomatic impact of, uh, the, the, of all of this. It seems Hamas was very intentional in targeting civilians, very intentional in using rape as a method of warfare, uh, taking hostages, killing children. All of that seems to be spelled out as part of what they were doing. And they called it the Al-Aqsa Flood, and they were trying to say something that you were the architect of, the Abraham Accords, that they were worried Saudi Arabia was going to come to peace and recognize Israel uh, and have diplomatic relations with is Israel. Was their end game all along to be so horrific they would force Israel to invade Gaza and in that put an end to the Abraham Accords? It could very well be because they're ultimately their, um, their actions are being dictated by Iran. And I think uh, Iran was uh, feeling extremely uncomfortable with the idea that Israel and Saudi Arabia could normalize. Uh, I think that would uh, ultimately lead to virtually the entire Arab world, along with Israel, aligned against Iran. And I think that 
very much could be the reason why Iran, you know, whose fingerprints are all over this, are now directing Hamas and to some extent Hezbollah as well, which has opened up a front along the north, to uh, you know to 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 fight Israel and to uh, put Israel in a position where Israel is no longer popular within the Arab world. You know, you have to understand that while Israel has peace treaties with Jordan and Egypt, for example, uh, neither of those countries has done anything to really um, prepare the citizenship, uh, the citizenry of these two countries to, uh, to to engage with Israel. That's why these are referred to as cold peace. You know, Israel in Egypt and Israel in Jordan. Very different than the United Arab Emirates, the things that we did. We, we actually, I think, built something that's based, you know, much more on, on people getting to know each other and, and learning to like each other. But, you know, Israel's borders are, even those countries with, with whom they're at peace, these streets are exploding right now because, you know, you know, as they say, you know, a lie goes halfway around the world before the truth even puts on its shoes, right? And this, this hospital attack, you know, was everywhere, you know, everywhere in the Arab street that Israel bombed the hospital and killed 500 people before the truth come out, came out that Islamic Jihad, you know, uh, shot a rocket into a hospital parking lot and killed far fewer people. So the, the streets are inflamed all around the world. And when that happens, uh, none of these cover governments are bold enough to move forward with peace initiatives until things die down. I do believe that when this dies down, and God willing, it will be soon, I believe that Saudi and Arabia, Saudi Arabia and Israel still have enough in common uh, to, to, to start revisiting uh, the idea of normalization. But it's certainly been set back, and I think, at the behest of Iran. Do you think there's a military goal here as well? The, 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 it, it looks like they're achieving the diplomatic goal. The Arab world is now united against Israel in, in ways I haven't seen for decades. Um, you know, Iran and Saudi Arabia had a, a diplomatic consultation just yesterday, so it's, it's brought them together. And so you look at this, is there a military thing here too? Are they expecting the IDF to get bogged down in uh, a uh, urban warfare situation in Gaza, and then Hezbollah will then attack from the north. Well, that, that's that, that's certainly something that we're concerned about, and and I think the the government of Israel is taking steps to make sure that doesn't happen. Look, I think what happened here, uh, in part, was these countries and these terror groups saw Israel very divided, uh, as you know, over the past uh, 12 months. Uh, there have been protests every Saturday night against the government. Uh, there have been, uh, you know, there's been real, real acrimony within the, the citizenship of Israel, uh, even to the point where people in the army and the reserves were saying, we're not going to serve this government. Uh, and I think that sent a very dangerous message to Israel's enemies. The, the reality is that after this um, horrific atrocity, a tr set of atrocities were committed by Hamas, the entire country is united. I mean, literally everyone. When Israel called up 300,000 reserves, which was the largest call up in its history, 350,000 soldiers showed up. I mean, just to give you a sense of where the country is. People are normally when there's a war, people are, you know, flocking to the airport to leave and the planes going out are full. This time the planes going out were relatively empty and the planes coming back were full of Israelis who were, you know, living outside the country coming back to serve. So um, if this thing has demonstrated, you know, one major miscalculation in the Arab world is the idea that Israel would be sufficiently divided where they could be weakened. Israel is very strong right now. The country is of one mind. Uh, the, the, the soldiers have been properly allocated to all the different fronts. It's not just Gaza. It's not just the north. It's also in Judea and Samaria where, you know, there's, there's no protective fence and where there's, there's been a great amount of hostility. Last night in Hebron, there were riots re reminiscent of the Hebron riots. Of 1929. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of bad stuff going on around the country, but I believe the IDF is up to the task, and more importantly, I believe the people of Israel are up to the task to to collectively uh, close ranks and protect their country. Uh, what can we do here in America to stand with Israel? Uh, it seems to be the most trying time in my lifetime since 1973. Uh, uh, yeah. What what can we do? Well, look, I think. Uh, you know, it, it, it may sound trite, but uh, Israel deeply, deeply appreciates American support. Um, the morale here is, is is critical. I think what's what's made, what's put Israel back on offense and is and has created, I think, a dynamic where, with God's help, they will undoubtedly prevail, is because they see the world behind them. 
And so I think to the extent that they see um, uh, they see people uh, praying for them, they see people, they see churches getting together and having, you know, a salute to Israel Knights, protect Israel Knights, God, God protect Israel Knights. Uh, I, I think that's enormously important because I think just like the Biden visit, I think uh, helped to, uh, you know, shore up Israel's morale when they see all the people from all around the country who care so much about Israel. And I think many of your listeners, if not all of them, fall into that category. I think it means a lot. And the second thing I think is just to make sure that uh, everyone speaks to their uh, their political representatives and makes it clear to them that it's in America's interest, overriding interest, for Israel to come out of this stronger and more secure than ever. Because not only is Israel uh, deeply, uh, provide deep you know spiritual uh, empowerment to all of us around the world, but it's a, a critical American ally. It's the forward, it's the forward base, if you will, you know, that America has in the Middle East, in which it knows, you know, uh, under circumstances better than any anything America could do. Israel is able to protect America from threats that emanate from this part of the world. They have an extraordinary visibility and technology. Even if, even if this past Saturday or a week ago Saturday, it didn't look like Israel was on its best game. But I think that's something which. Will, will has been self-corrected and will not happen again. Well, Ambassador Feynman, thanks so much for joining with us, and you can be assured we stand with Israel, uh, and we thank you for your service. Well, thank you so much, and God bless all of you, and God bless your listeners. Thank you very much.